Hi everybody, today we're going to be talking about lesson 18, multiplying by multiples of 10 and 100. So a multiple is simply any number that we get when we multiply by 1, by 2, by 3. So for example, if we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. These are all multiples of 10 because I can multiply each one by 10. 10 is a factor. 4 times 10, 5 times 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 are multiples of 10 because 10 is a factor. So notice, to go from the one of the numbers to the product, we simply add a zero. We add a zero to the one to make it 10, a zero to the two to make it 20, a zero to the three to make it 30, and so on. If I wanted to talk about multiples of 100, 100 is so it equals 1 times 100. 200 equals 2 times 100. 300 equals 3 times 100, and so on. To get a multiple of 100, I simply add two zeros to my number in order to make it a multiple of 100. So let's talk about how we can use that when we talk about multiplying. So here we have example one. Last season, a college basketball player played an average of 40 minutes per game and played 37 games. How many game minutes did that player play last season? So we have 40 minutes a game times 37 games. So I'm gonna set up my problem as 37 and I could set it up like this times 40. If I did that, 0 times 7 is 0, 0 times 3 is 0. Move on to the 4 to put my placeholder. 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 3 is 12, 13, 14. And I have to add, and it's kind of a long process. Instead, what I can do is I can set up my problem a little bit differently. 37 times, and now I'm going to move my 40 over one place to the right so that the zero is hanging out here all by itself. Now you can only do this kind of a problem if you have a number ending in zero. If this is anything else, this will not work. But what I can do then is bring my zero straight down and now I can multiply. 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 3 is 12, 13, 14. And I put in my units because it's a word problem. And now I am finished. So because 40 is a multiple of 10, I can move that 40 over and bring my zero straight down. It's almost like pretending that this zero isn't here, multiplying by four and then just sticking the zero on the end because I'm multiplying by a multiple of 10. I get the same answer as I did over here, but I do it in one less step. Okay, let's look at example two. Chandra sold 10 tickets to the school play to friends and relatives for $3.75 per ticket. How much money did Chandra collect from ticket sales? So we have 10 tickets at $3.75 a ticket. So this is a money problem. $3.75 times 10. So this is how I would normally set up a problem. 
but because I'm multiplying by 10, which is inherently a multiple of 10, I can change this problem to $3.75 times 10 and move my 10 over one place so the zero is hanging out all by itself. Bring that zero straight down and now multiply. One times five is five, one times seven is seven, one times three is three. But here's the, what we do with the decimal. If I bring my decimal straight down, I still have $3.750. But we can't do that with money. With money, you must have, money must have two numbers to the right of the decimal. Okay, so because this is money, I have to have two numbers to the right of the decimal, so my decimal has to go here. So she sold a total of $37.50. I can also do it one other way, which is by writing $3.75, add a zero on the end, and then just move my decimal over one place, giving me 37.50. This way or this way will both work just fine. Okay, that's it for examples. You have lesson practice. See if you can do it some of the slightly easier way by just moving the, the zero over and bringing it down and save yourself a step, okay? Have a good night and I will see you in the morning.